Peace be upon you. God willing, today we're going to ask a question. Was Rashad Khalifa a messenger of God? So who was Rashad Khalifa? Rashad Khalifa was an Egyptian-born biochemist who in 1974 God used to reveal the mathematical miracle of the Quran. We uh, learned about the mathematical miracle of the Quran in an earlier podcast, and uh, it's absolutely phenomenal, and God calls it one of the great miracles in chapter 74, verse 35. One of the first objections that you typically hear uh, to this question was Rashad Khalifa, messenger of God, is that Muhammad was the final messenger. Uh, and nowhere in the Quran do we read that Muhammad was the final messenger, uh, as we saw in an earlier podcast, uh, but Muhammad was the final prophet. In uh, chapter 33, verse 40, we read, we seek refuge in God from Satan the rejected. It says, Muhammad was not the father of any man among you. He was a messenger of God and the final prophet. God is fully aware of all things. So here it's clearly saying that Muhammad was the final prophet, not the final messenger. Uh, there is a umbrella rule in the Quran in chapter 7, verse 35, that as long as there are children of Adam on this earth, God will continue to send messengers. It reads, O children of Adam, when messengers come to you from among you and recite my revelations to you, those who take heed and lead a righteous life will have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. So God made such a statement in the Quran, uh, and it's addressing uh, messengers, plural. So if it was only addressing Muhammad, then it wouldn't need to use the plural tense. And God is telling us that when messengers, plural, come to you from among you uh, and recite my revelations to you, those who take heed and lead a righteous life will have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. Uh, God is giving us a very firm recommendation here that uh, there are messengers to come, and when they come, it's uh, in our best interest to uh, listen to them and take heed to their message. One of the strongest arguments, I think, in regards to uh, was Rashad Khalifa a messenger of God is, uh, would God give one of the great miracles of the Quran to a liar? Uh, God tells us in the Quran that only the sincere uh, believers uh, have access to the Quran. Uh, so if Rashad Khalifa was not sincere and if he was a liar, uh, it would contradict the verses of the Quran that he would have access to such a phenomenal miracle. Um, the verse that really kind of uh, addresses uh, Rashad Khalifa as uh, God calls him the uh, messenger of the covenant is in chapter 3, verse 81. Uh, it reads, God took a covenant from the prophets saying, I will give you the scripture and wisdom. And this is afterwards, a messenger will come to confirm all existing scriptures. You shall believe in him and support him. He said, do you agree with this and pledge to fulfill this covenant? They said, we agree. He said, you have thus borne witness, and I bear witness along with you. So we see a few things here. One, it says God took a covenant from the prophets. So was Prophet Muhammad a prophet? Yes. And it says afterwards, meaning after the prophets come after the scriptures, a messenger will come to confirm all existing scriptures. Some people uh, think that this verse is referring to Jesus, but then that comes out as a contradiction uh, due to the fact that God says he took a covenant from the prophets, and Jesus definitely was a prophet. Uh, and also, it's, uh, we read in 3340 that Muhammad was the last prophet. So if Jesus was to come after him, then that would make Jesus the last prophet, and that's uh, a direct contradiction. Uh, this major prophecy has been fulfilled by God's messenger of the covenant as prophesied in the verse. And it's also mentioned in the Bible, Malachi verse 3, verse 1 through 21, in Luke uh, 17, 22 through 36, and in Matthew 24, 27. Uh, it is to purify and unify God's messages which were delivered by God's prophets, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, etc., uh, they've all been severely corrupted. Uh, it is the will of Almighty God to purify them and unify them under the banner of worshiping Him alone. Uh, overwhelming evidence has been provided by God in support of His Messenger of the Covenant, uh, whose name is incontrovertibly specified in the Quran's mathematical code uh, as Rashad Khalifa. Uh, for example, uh, if we add the geometrical value of Rashad, which is 505, plus the value of Khalifa, 725, plus the verse number 81, uh, it gives us 13, 11, or 19 times 69. And we're going to see more of how the uh, mathematical structure supports uh, the evidence that Rashad Khalifa definitely was a messenger of God. Uh, another objection that we hear to this uh, verse in 381 is that, no, 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 this uh, verse is referring to Muhammad. And in 33, 7, uh, God actually clarifies that this verse is not referring to Muhammad. In addition, that it's talking about a messenger to come after the prophets. 
and Muhammad again was a prophet. So in 33 7 it reads, Recall that we took a, from the prophets their covenant, including you, uh, so it's you, O Muhammad, uh, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, son of Mary. Uh, we took from them a solemn pledge. So God is talking about the same covenant, and it's saying that it's referring that we took the covenant from Muhammad. So now let's look at some of the uh, mathematical structure that supports uh, Rashad Khalifa being uh, the messenger of the covenant. Uh, so the root word of Rashad uh, occurs in the Quran 19 times. And the, the root word Rashad means to uphold the right guidance. Uh, the word Khalifa means a leader, a representative, and this word occurs in the Quran uh, twice. And if you add all the verses and chapters where the two words Rashad and Khalifa occur, the number is uh, 1,463, which is uh, 19 times 77. Uh, God uses a similar uh, method uh, in regards to Jesus prophesizing the coming of Muhammad. And it's uh, shown in chapter 61, verse 6, uh, where it says, Recall that Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am God's messenger to you, confirming the Torah and bringing good news of a messenger to come after me, whose name will be even more praised. So this expression, more praised in Arabic, is uh, Ahmad, which is the root word of the word Muhammad. Uh, so, God is uh, using this to basically indicate to future generations that when Muhammad comes, uh, basically his root word of his name is Ahmad. Uh, and God uses the same way in regards to uh, Rashad Khalifa. Uh, as opposed to just spelling out the next messenger to come, God uses these cues. Because uh, logically, if God was to say that you know the next messenger to come uh, would be Muhammad, you know, how many people would name their child Muhammad? In the same way, if God said the next messenger was Rashad Khalifa, how many people would name their child Rashad Khalifa? So the word Rashad, uh, not the root word, but the actual word Rashad, occurs twice in the Quran. Uh, both times is in chapter 40, verses uh, 29 and 38. Uh, and it's right between a uh, statement that individuals typically make uh, in regards to uh, thinking that the messenger that came to their community is the final messenger. Uh, and that's in verse uh, 34 of chapter 40. We read, Joseph had come to you before that with clear revelations, but you continued to doubt his message. Then when he died, you said, God will not send any other messenger after him. He was the last messenger. God thus sends astray those who are transgressors, doubtful. So this is at the time of uh, Joseph. And people thought that Joseph was the final messenger, that God was not going to send another one. And uh, after Joseph came uh, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. Uh, but still, every single time, people think that the messenger that came to their community was exclusive. Uh, you know, the Jews still rejected every messenger that came after Moses. Uh, Christians think that Jesus was the last, you know, messenger. Uh, and as we're well familiar, Muslims think that Muhammad was the uh, final messenger. So in that same chapter, uh, chapter 40, verse 28, we read um, what this individual known as the uh, believing Egyptian uh, said when he's uh, arguing with uh, Pharaoh's people. It reads, a believing man among Pharaoh's people who is concealing his belief said, how can you kill a man just for saying my Lord is God and has shown you clear proofs from your Lord? If he is a liar, that is his problem. And if he is truthful, you benefit from his promises. Surely God does not guide any transgressor, a liar. So this believing Egyptian, he makes a statement, how can you kill a man just for saying my Lord is God? Uh, ironically, um, that's exactly what they did. In uh, January 31st, 1990, they martyred uh, Rashad Khalifa uh, in his masjid in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, his only... <laughs> uh, fault that people found in him was that he was uh, advocating the worship of God alone and apparently this really upset the uh, Muslim masses. Chapter 40 verses 41 through uh, 44 we read uh, a continuation of this believing Egyptian. It says, Oh my people, while I invite you to be saved, you invite me to the hellfire. You invite me to be unappreciative of God and to set up beside him idols that I do not recognize. I am inviting you to the Almighty, the Forgiver. There is no doubt that what you invite me to do has no basis in this world nor in the hereafter, that our ultimate return is to God and that the transgressors have incurred the hellfire. Someday you will remember what I am telling you now. I leave the judgment of this matter to God. God is seer of all the people. So another uh, typical uh, objection pe I hear in regards to uh, Rashad Khalifa being a messenger of God is that 
they say, is he not just a human being? Um, and this is a, <laughs> a typical utterance of uh, people who are disbelievers, and it came at the time Muhammad, Moses, Saleh, uh, all the prophets and messengers got the typical response because we have this impression that these uh, messengers, these prophets, uh, they had halos above them. They were, uh, you know, white light followed them wherever they went. And in reality, they were just human beings. Uh, and in chapter 17, verses uh, 90 through 94, we read, they said, we will not believe you unless you, are, you cause a spring to gush out of the ground or unless you own a garden of date palms and grapes with rivers running through it or unless you cause masses from the skies you claim to fall on us or unless you bring god and the angels before our eyes or unless you own a luxurious mansion or unless you climb into the sky even if you do climb we will not believe unless you bring a book that we can read say glory be to my lord am i no more than a human messenger what prevented the people from believing when the guidance came to them is their saying that god send a human being as a messenger so God is showing us that it's a typical utterance of disbelievers that when a messenger comes, that they have these uh, grandiose expectations of what he's supposed to do and how he's supposed to look and the wealth he's supposed to have. And when they see that he's just a regular human being, uh, they object to uh, God's wisdom as far as who he bestows a uh, messengership to. And in uh, 25 verses uh, 7 through 8 and 20, we read... Um, the typical utterances of disbelievers and they said how come this messenger eats the food and walks in the markets if only an angel could come down with him to serve uh, with him as a preacher or if only a treasure could be given to him or if only he could possess an orchard with which he eats the transgressors also said you're falling a bewitched man in verse 20 of chapter 25 we read we did not send any messenger before you who did not eat the food and walk in the markets we thus test you by each other will you steadfastly persevere in your lord is seer so people they have these expectations of these messengers and they expect you know that the angels were going to be accompanying him and when they see that he's just a normal human being uh, that you know eats the same food as everyone else shops at the same markets as everyone else it becomes hard for them to believe that this individual is a messenger of god and their natural tendency is to reject it in uh, chapter 34 uh, verses 43 through uh, 40 through 50 um, it reads when our proofs were recited to them perfectly clear, they said, this is simply a man who wants to divert you from the way your parents are worshiping. They also said, these are fabricated lies. Those who disbelieve also said about the truth that came to them. This is obviously magic. So we think about this. Uh, Rashad Khalifa comes and he advocates the worship of God alone uh, to remove all forms of uh, idol worship or partners with God to uh, purify the Salat, to correct the Shahada back to its original state. Um, and people, they're concerned that uh, he's diverting them from the way that their parents were worshiping. Uh, and they also, in regards to the mathematical miracle, uh, they think that it's magic, when in actuality it's a very uh, structured, simple to understand, impossible to imitate uh, miracle from God. In uh, verse 44, it says, We did not give them any other books to study, nor did we send uh, to them before you another warner those before them disbelieved and even though they did not see one tenth of the miracle we have given to this generation when they disbelieved my messengers how severe was my retribution say i ask you to do one thing devote yourselves to god in pairs or as individuals then reflect your friend Rashad is not crazy. He is a manifest warner to you just before the advent of a terrible retribution. Say, I do not ask you for any wage. You keep it. My wage comes only from God. He witnesses all things. Say, my Lord causes the truth to prevail. He is the knower of all secrets. Say, the truth has come while falsehood can neither initiate anything nor repeat it. Say, if I go astray, I go astray because of my own shortcomings. And if I am guided, it is because of my Lord's inspiration. He is here near. So this is one of the requirements in the Quran that Basically, if uh, someone comes and claims to be a messenger, they advocate the worship of God alone, they produce a miracle, do not ask for any wage, that it's our duty to believe in them because we can only benefit from this. Uh, God will not allow someone to come with a miracle uh, and uh, from God and then basically be a liar and send people astray. <coughs> One of the typical objections is they say, uh, you know, we don't need a messenger. Right. People think that they're uh, much smarter than God and that, you know, God decides to give us a messenger. And the response is we don't need a messenger. 
But I'd like to ask you, I mean, is it really that absurd that God would send a messenger? Think of this. Walk into any major mosque in anywhere in the world and tell me, is it dedicated to God alone? I mean, do you walk in there or do you see just the name of God, Allah, on the walls? Or do you see Allah with Muhammad and sometimes Ali and Hussein and all these other people? Why is it that there isn't a major place of worship where it's dedicated to God alone? It's absolutely absurd. You walk into a church and they're worshiping Jesus. You know, uh, you walk into a mosque and you can't tell, you know, which word is Allah and which one is Muhammad if you don't speak uh, Arabic. You know, they depict them side by side. And you think in uh, chapter 72, verse 18, it says the places of worship belong to God. Do not call on anyone else beside God. And in verse 19, it says when God's servant advocated him alone, almost all of them banded together to oppose him. I'm sure some people are going to be listening to this podcast and they're going to be upset. They're going to be angry and hostile because uh, basically we're preaching the worship of God alone, to mention God alone, to dedicate the, the mosque, your salat, the first commandment, all your um, practices to God alone and people, they get upset. Uh, you know, we look at how the Muslim masses, they've corrupted the first commandment, the Shahada. They've added Muhammad's name uh, next to God's, uh, that they added Muhammad's name in their Salat, that they can't dedicate these practices absolutely to God alone. Uh, you consult the uh, religious leaders, and these are the people who are the worst in hypocrisy and disbelief. Uh, they commit such transgressions and uh, oppression, uh, it's, unheard, you know, it's unheard of. They don't even follow the Quran. And is it really a surprise that God would send another messenger to help us, to guide us, uh, to you know get us right on the right path? And in 6511, we read a messenger who recites to you God's revelations clearly to lead those who believe and work righteousness out of darkness into light. Anyone who believes in God and leads a righteous life, he will admit him into gardens with flowing streams. They abide therein forever. God is God will generously reward him. So it's a it's a blessing from God to send a messenger. Uh, to basically take those who believe out of darkness into light because realistically without a messenger at this point if someone was to be born into uh, this religion uh, their chances of finding truth is very slim so we should be appreciative and be thankful of God uh, for sending such a messenger so I'm just going to end with uh, one final verse. It's from uh, chapter 5, verse 19. It says, O people of the scripture, our messenger has come to you to explain things to you after a period of time without messengers, lest you say, we did not receive any preacher or warner. A preacher and warner has now come to you. God is omnipotent. So as always, uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to send us an email at Talk at gmail.com. Uh, until next time, peace and God bless.